It is so big. Could be bigger. So that's um, it's one way to stay positive. It could always be bigger. But um, it's big enough, I would say. And uh, there's the client's house. Had to move this fence out of the way. I told him that we would not be responsible for this fence. And we are going to use some boards that we milled um, from one of our redwood removals. Uh, I should say the only redwood removal. <laughs> Anyway, we milled those boards out of it. Um, we're gonna build a nice sturdy A-frame to help support this. And then we're just gonna do this one as carefully as possible. Climbing the oak that it's hung up in as, um, as the main tie-in point. Hey, we're gonna be trying out the Lenardi rope collared, the Lenardi hitch wrap. Kinda similar to a GRCS, although you can't lift with it, which um, takes away a lot of charm there, but but it's a big bollard. There's probably three trees that we have to take down, um, which are just in the way of the work, and that is this chestnut oak, this maple, and then that maple. That maple is already involved in the collateral damage. Anyways, my objective is going to be first reducing as much weight as possible. Everything that we know is not stabilizing the tree in the uh, white oak. All right, the two trees, just for reference here, the white oak is the thing that we have the rigging in, and that's gonna be the one I'm climbing in. My main tie-in point, I'm sorry, is, is in the white oak. I will be climbing in the other. The other is a chestnut oak. So, just keep that in the back of your mind for reference. It's kind of hard to tell them apart when you're looking up there, they, you know, they're very similar. There's a lot of weight that we can reduce before we have to start cutting structural branches. Structural branches are the ones that are propping it in the white oak. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, it becomes unpredictable. We've tried to reduce the unpredictable nature of it by building an A-frame underneath. We don't know for sure how it will shift or roll until we start to see it getting, you know, settling in and weighting it. I, I like that A-frame, I really do, but um, we still want to reduce the weight as much as possible before we have to test it. Anyways, then um, the other thing to think about is the rigging. The, some of these branches from this chestnut oak, they go out as, and they're hanging ro right over top of me right now. So I'm on the client's porch here and we got the corner of this roof. We can cause tremendous damage if we don't rig pieces. So running ropes is what's going to take the longest time. The terrain is also uneven, lots of tripping hazards, and we don't have a machine to get big pieces out of here. So you guys got to be dicing it up really quick and getting the smaller debris over to the neighbor's side of the property. All right, I guess we'll pray. Any questions before I... I think we've talked about this already a good bit. This is a hard one. Thank you, Lord, for this day and this opportunity to work. We do pray for safety and your will be done. And uh, help me just not be um, a, a jerk uh, because of my anxiety with this one in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so I was pretty nervous about this one. Um, there was nothing easy about it. And every other company that the client had talked to had refused to take the job without a crane. I didn't think a crane would help us a whole lot regardless but it was also going to add you know like two thousand dollars to the bill at least but even with a crane this was such a tangled mess i just didn't see how the crane would even really accomplish much so we came up with a plan to tackle it with no crane i went pretty far out to try to untangle this from the surrounding forest but i didn't do quite a good enough job as you're about to see um, it was really crowded in there, very congested. Anyways, we cut this one and it barely gets stuck still. Sometimes there's a temptation to just keep lowering a really big piece and hope that it'll eventually fall out under its own weight. But this one's butt hitched. So if you're to keep lowering and lowering and then it breaks free, it could suddenly be in range 
of the client's house when it flips back to its weighted side, which is gonna be the tips. Or it could even take out a guy on the ground. Keep that in mind. Um, we ended up hooking up some mechanical advantage. I think we ended up using the CMI rope jack with this one and a tagline and we pulled it out of the tree that it was stuck in and resumed. It's okay. Let's take a look. At this point, I've reduced about as much as I can from the crown without cutting further into structural parts of the tree. So I decided to incorporate that Sterling 5 8 rigging rope. Now this rigging rope would not be enough to support this weight on its own, but in combination with the A-frame, it was just an added layer of security. So we went ahead to do that and continued to cut it until it was totally settled in the A-frame being supported additionally by that rope. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> There, now lower. So Jason had been using the Lenardi bollard the whole day until now. So he had too many wraps on the smaller porter wrap. It's a lot harder to hit the sweet spot with a smaller bollard. Well, that about wraps it up for this one. This is uh, how we took a big hung up oak and mitigated the risk without a crane. And it wasn't flawless, but we stayed safe and no property was damaged. So I'm thanking God, as always, for the wisdom he provides to finish these types of hazard trees. And I hope he gives that wisdom to some of you out there as well. And his word tells us, for those of you who haven't asked, that he gives wisdom generously to anyone who does ask him for it in faith. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Be safe out there.